Welcome to another For the King video. This is an easy one. Today I'm going to talk about traits. Traits are a new addition in For the King 2 and they allow your characters to get an extra passive skill. So far there are only eight traits you can pick from and I'm going to talk through all of them and talk about how to unlock them and which ones I think are the best and which characters they work best on. So let's exit the overworld and enter the dungeon. In general the traits are not unlocked in any order. They're pretty easy to unlock and, and you'll get them just by playing the game. The first is gifted. This trait gives plus three to all stats. Basically meaning plus three to intelligence, strength, vitality, and so on. You unlock this by increasing a character to level seven. Again, pretty easy. You should get this just as you're playing through the chapters. It sort of feels like this trait was specifically made for Hobo. If you haven't unlocked Hobo yet, he's an unlockable character that was also an FTK1. Honestly, he's pretty boring. He has no passive skills. He just has fantastic stats. So the idea is that he can act as a filler and just do whatever your party is lacking. He starts with 75 in each stat, so an extra 3 for each of these is pretty crazy. I don't always play hobo, but if you have a hobo in your party, it doesn't really make sense to me why you would be using gifted on anyone else but hobo. I had a run recently where I was constantly swapping my hobo build based on the items that were dropping. Pair that with some stat specific armor and your hobo can go from reliably using a physical weapon to using an intelligence magic weapon. Obviously plus three of all stats is going to be useful on every character. The only other character I'd consider using this on is Friar. I just really like the strength intelligence combo and if my Friar is using physical weapons then I'm probably using taunt and an extra plus three vitality comes in really useful there as well. Well. Next is Deep Thinker. This is easily one of the best traits in FTK2. This trait gives your character plus one max focus and gives them the skill Eureka, which allows the character to regain full focus and health after leveling up. You can unlock this trait by using eight plus focus in the overworld in a single turn. It doesn't have to be on one character. Obviously you can see immediately why this is so good. You already get some focus and health back upon leveling up, but it's certainly not full HP and focus. Having this trait can help you potentially save a God's Beard or Golden Root if you know you're going to level up soon. This works really well on basically any character, but I tend to want to give this trait to my physical damage dealing character. This is a very powerful trait for characters that are going to be taunting or characters that don't often have a lot of focus to begin with. Blacksmith, Hunter, Stable Hand, and even Hobo benefit greatly from this trait. Following up one of the best traits is, in my opinion, the best trait in FTK2. That is Tactician. This trait gives you the chance to buff a random friendly combat tile. A character that is occupying this buff tile will do plus 5 damage. This trait is unlocked by repeatedly causing crits and high damage. This is the best trait in the game because it comes in so clutch and it has the most immediate impact in game. You'll no doubt find a weapon that does splash damage or area of effect, so if you get that extra plus 5 damage, it goes a long way. It's also a very versatile trait. If you get lucky enough to proc tactics, it will proc on an empty friendly tile, which means you get to choose who gets to take advantage of this damage buff. In FTK2, you'll often feel underpowered, and this trait can help balance the fight in your favor if you move the right character into the buff tile. Since unlocking this, I've never started a run without it. It really doesn't matter who you assign this to. Maybe it makes sense to give it to Hunter, Stable Hand, or someone with high speed, since there's a chance they can proc tactics before the rest of your party attacks. Next is Eager. Eager gives your character a 25% chance to strike first regardless of the character speed. This is unlocked after you complete Chapter 2. This is another really strong trait. Having the chance to have turn priority can be very helpful. It really only makes sense to give this trait to a character with low speed, as a character with high speed might attack first anyway. Eager works really well with Blacksmith, as if you proc it, you can taunt before any of the enemies get to attack. I also used this with Friar, who had a two-handed cannon, and let me tell you, it was so much fun being able to go first and just deleting one or two of the enemies even before they get the chance to attack. Really fun tactic, works really well on slow characters. Moving on to Nimble. Nimble gives you plus one secondary action in combat and it's unlocked by moving four or more tiles in one turn. Nothing really special here, plus one secondary action in combat can be really useful. You can use it with Herbalist to move on the grid and party heal. Or if you're using a gun, you can move maybe behind a shielded character and then reload and shoot. 
Useful trait to have, but there are weapons and armor that also allow for plus one secondary action. Further, there's a herb that gives you plus two secondary action when consumed. So there's a lot of other ways in the game to get additional secondary actions. The trait Lucky gives you 25 luck. This is unlocked by using the skeleton key to open the secret room in the resistance. This is a weird trait. I would personally probably not take this trait just because the luck stat is really not useful. And again, there's a lot of armors and even weapons that give you increased luck. I think the toy hammer from FTK1 is in this game. I can't remember if it's a luck check, but that and the Dark Carnival seem to be the only real uses for luck. It's funny because it's probably the least useful trait, but it's also the most difficult to obtain since you have to get a special key drop, which is not guaranteed. These last two traits are unlocked after you buy a boat in Chapter 3. Navigator gives you plus two movement while you're on a boat. This is a really specific trait. You don't really need to use boats until chapter four, so this trait might be useful for that chapter. Future Nerbly here, I eventually realized that Navigator does apply to the land boat, so whether you're on the boat on the water or you're on the land boat, you do get plus two additional movement if you have this trait. Supportive is the other trait that you unlock after buying a boat, and this one is more useful. Supportive increases your support range by plus one tile. This is the range at which your characters will be pulled into combat, so this can be really useful if if you get ambushed or like to travel a little bit spread out. You save time if you don't have to waste additional turns getting closer to each other. There are the traits. These are a great addition to the game and allow for a lot more run variety by allowing you to play the way you want. Some are very clearly more useful than others. I look forward to see how these will interact with future DLC and also what new traits get added into the game. Let me know what traits you enjoy using the most down below. And as always, I've been streaming this game on Twitch, so feel free to drop in and provide me some backseat gaming. Thank you. See ya.